the Soul Rep 2000. Now, full disclosure here, I got to tell you guys the whole story behind this. Uh, Tassie Holmes said, we know that you're obsessed, Pete, with the uh, temperature controlled Hakko soldering iron, but it's a hundred bucks and maybe your audience would be interested in checking out a low cost uh, temperature adjustable soldering iron. And I said, yes, that sounds great. Hi, I'm Ski with Pete, as my hat can tell you. Today we're taking a look at the Tassie Home soldering iron. This is the Soul Rep 2000. This is a temperature controlled, uh, low cost budget soldering iron, and I'm going to test it out today. So let's get to it. It's like a uh, lipstick. There we go. Like a lipstick one on the left and a pointy one on the right. Uh, and then, of course, like I say, these are the two that it came that the package came to me with. I think these are add-ons that you can buy at the uh, at the Amazon store or whatever. Links, by the way, to this and everything else you can see on my desk are in the About section. So those are the other ones. You can see how pointy-pointy those are. Let's see what tip it actually came with. Um, the answer to that is is actually the tip that I most often use. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera to focus here. This is the tip that I use. It's a chisel tip, fine chisel tip. Uh, this is what I use for keyboard building, so I'm not even going to change that. Uh, but just for the sake of the video and clarity, uh, the way that you change the tips on this uh, is you remove that like that, pull this off. Look how easy this is to do. Uh, don't do this, of course, while it's hot, but uh, you just slide this off and then uh, slide the other one. You'd slide the other one on like that. Boop, and you're done. Super easy to do if you need to change your tips um, often, which maybe you do for the type of work that you do. Uh, but for me, this chisel tip uh, does most of the work that I like to do. All right, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit more about this soldering iron. Okay, here is the temperature control. The temperature control is in Fahrenheit. Uh, and there's the dot to line it up at. So uh, I like to solder around 650. That's what works best for uh, my lead-free solder. So now that I've set that there, that should work. Um, you can see it's got this clear housing. Uh, it looks like it's got an LED inside, so you can you can see when it's on the LED there. That's cool. Okay, uh, looking at th this is. I'm gonna admit that this is a little bit weird. Okay, this is the plug. The plug is a two-pronged plug without a direction, without one of the sizes being bigger than the other. But what's really unusual is it's got this anti-static clip. Um, the anti-static, why wouldn't you just have a three-pronged plug with a neutral? I don't know. Uh, that's weird to me, but we can we can find somewhere to ground this, uh, probably to uh, uh, probably to the wall or something. Uh, that's that. The other thing is this doesn't come with a stand at all. There's no way to rest this. Uh, so what I'm going to do to rest it is this Hakko 633 solder iron holder. Uh, so I'll drop the solder iron in there. Well, you can't quite see that because my head's covering it. I'll drop the soldering iron in there. This one works pretty well. It's kind of universal. And then I'll clean it in, in here like that. That's the plan. Okay. Yeah, for a $20 soldering iron, so far, my feeling is like, yeah, it's not bad. Pretty good, actually. Uh, the way it wants me to hold it is like this. So I'm actually going to rotate the tip so that it's uh, better suited to the way I would like it to be. Uh, which is like this. Okay. Again, nice part about removable tips is you can adjust them. Now... First things first, let's just talk a little bit about soldering irons. This soldering iron at $20 is much better, even if it doesn't work, it's still much better than the one you can buy at Home Depot for 15 bucks. I know that already because this is temperature adjustable and this is designed for electronics work, which the one at Home Depot is not. Andrew, if you're listening, I'm talking to you. All right, uh, all right. so first things first, I'm gonna connect this anti-static Faching. And then I'm going to connect this to my power supply at the back here. You can just about see it. 
That's what my fan's actually attached to. When you first get a soldering iron, uh, the tip is untinned. It's like in its raw form. And what you want to do, what you want to do is you want to get solder onto that tip before it starts to go black or oxidize. So really what we're going to do, you got to figure out a method to get solder onto that as soon as you possibly can. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. One of the, one of the ways that you can do it is by wrapping, oh, I've lost, just done it off screen, is to get some thin solder, the thin, thinnest solder you've got, and wrap it into a little coil, which is the method I'm gonna use today. That way, as the soldering iron is heating up, you just put the coil over, and as soon as it's ready to melt, it just melts, is to coil this. So I'm just gonna put this down, and I'm just gonna coil it around like this. The coiling method, you can say you saw it here. Just like that. You see that coil there? That coil means that as soon as it's ready, this is going to get covered. This is the same solder that I use in Thick and Thin. It's Kester lead-free solder. You should always use the same type of solder, and you should do your tip in the type of solder that you use. Okay, the little lights come on. The little light there has come on, which means that we're starting to heat up. And I'm going to put my little coil on, on action cam here. I'm just waiting for this thing to hot up. Oh. Oh. It's gone a little awry for me. It's not gone that bad. The coil is still on there. Just waiting for it to heat up. I can start to smell that it's cooking. There we go. You see that? And that, then the tip just got covered all at once. That's the right way to do it. Now I've got a fan here. My fan is not blowing. You can see that? Maybe you can't because it's not that. But basically the tip is now fully covered in solder. You're not going to be able to stop the oxidation at the top of that. Like there's a line there. You're not gonna be able to cover so much so that it doesn't cover that bit. Whew, smoky smoky. But that's it, That uh, the iron is now covered in, smo in solder. So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. And now I can turn it off. So this thing that I'm about to solder is uh, the ZL7432US in-wall two-switch relay. This is for another project, completely unrelated to keyboards, but I really need to tin all these wires. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I thought, why not tin them with a brand new soldering iron? So that's what I'm going to do. If you've never tinned before, it's really easy. All you need to do is uh, heat the wire and apply some solder. Uh, if you're looking to practice uh, something or you've never soldered before, uh, tinning wires is a great and easy way to start. Just gets you right in. And uh, it means that the wires will last longer. Anywhere you got a raw wire, this is uh, a really simple thing to do. Oh, I see how the little light works uh, on this too. Uh, the light comes on when it's heating, and when it's reached temperature, uh, there's the little light. When it's reached temperature, the light goes off. Uh, cool, okay. Uh, again, just gonna wipe this.
This is easily the best $20 soldering iron I've ever used. Um, no joke. I'm genuinely impressed here. And that, like what I expected, what I actually expect with, because with cheap soldering irons, and trust me, I've used a plethora of cheap soldering irons. Uh, the Yehua, by the way, is the worst one, and it's not even that cheap. Um, is that they have these wild temperature variations so that you'll do one switch and it'll look smooth and perfect, and you'll do the next switch and it'll look uh, really poor. It'll look like... Um, it hadn't melted properly. But that is not what I'm getting here. I'm getting a real consistent, real consistent temperature out of this thing, which again is surprising given that it's only 20 bucks. Uh, so just my final thoughts here on the uh, Tassi Home Soul Rep 2000. Uh, I think it's really good. It's surprisingly good for 20 bucks. Uh, you can find a link to this in the about section below. Again, thank you to uh, Tossy Home for sending this to me and for being so cool about me taking forever to actually do this review. Um, it's really cool. It's, yeah, again, I'm surprised several times in all those tips. This is going to be a great addition uh, to my space. Thank you again. Uh, don't forget to press like. Don't forget to press subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. We'll see you back again soon.